Hello everyone, I'm Ernie and I am so glad you're here with us today. Today we are working on a mail call project that we received from Lord Shadow from Montana and let's get to it. Here we have some granodirite that we received from Lord Shadow from Montana and Lord Shadow is here and he is going to give us a description of this ore. Okay, here we go Ernie. This is granodiorite. Looks very similar to the uh, gabbro, but it's not. This is an intermediary rock, whereas uh, gabbro is a mafic rock. So we got your sample out of this wall here, out of this granodiorite wall. And if you look up here at the top, you'll see that quartz vein, and we tried to get some of that into the sample for you. So. Usually this stuff runs around with gold in place. It looks very promising. So, good luck, have fun, talk to you soon. The scranodirite from this vein has never been assayed and so we are going to use our aqua process today and see if we can capture any gold. We have our larger pieces of ore in our furnace and we're going to cook them at about 1600 degrees for about a half an hour. And when we do this, they just crush up much easier and this is the reason why we are cooking them. Here is our rock crusher that I had cleaned out so there will not be any contamination and I am running my 1 8 of an inch screen mesh in our rock crusher. Here is our granodirite that I had classified out and we are not going to cook these because they're small enough and they will crush easy in the rock crusher. Here is our granodirite that we had cooked in our furnace at 1600 degrees for 30 minutes. And let's get to crushing. Our crushed ore weighs 12.9 pounds. And now we are going to roast our ore and the reason why we need to roast our ore is because when I was cooking the ore I could smell the sulfur burning. That means there are sulfides in the ore and we need to roast the ore to crack open the sulfides which will release the gold if there's any gold in the sulfides. I get the temperature up to 900 degrees to roast our ore. Now that our roasted ore is cooled down, we will run it through the sluice box and get the concentrate. What I am doing now, I am going to switch out the gold pans and pull out the gold pan that has the tailings in it and I will pan this out later to see if we had missed any concentrate from the sluice mat. Once I am finished running the material through the sluice box, I will clean out the sluice mat and the sluice box and capture our concentrate. Now it's time to pan out our concentrate.
This camera shot does not justify the view, but there are some tiny sulfides at the bottom and on the edge of this material. We now have our material in our 500 milliliter beaker, and now we are going to do our hydrochloric acid wash. What I would like for you to notice is how dark our hydrochloric acid wash is. I do have a new add-on procedure to my rinsing process that was taught to me by fellow YouTuber and friend Prospector Tripp. I was watching one of his episodes and he used this water heater kettle to preheat his water to do his rinses and it saves us a lot of time by preheating our water. And what I will do in my description box, I will leave you a link to his channel so you could watch some of his episodes episodes and he does a lot of neat projects in his episodes and I encourage you to subscribe to him and watch his episodes and we can learn a lot together from Prospector Trip. Now what I would like for you to take notice is how dark the solution is from our hydrochloric acid wash. I have never had any material come out this dark before. I do need to make a mention, and I'm not going to show it in the video, but I did do eight distilled water rinses. And here is what our solution looks like after all those rinses. Now we will perform our nitric acid wash. I will add in 200 milliliters of distilled water and then slowly add in the nitric acid until there is no more reaction and we will let this boil for one hour. Here I will save this solution to see if there is any silver in this solution, which will make it silver nitrate, and I will do two rinses to this material. Now we will make our aqua regia and we will start with 200 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and three milliliters of nitric acid. I apologize about the poor camera work. I forgot to reset the camera for this angle. I am using a small measuring pipette to add in our nitric acid into our solution. Here I am going to add in an extra one and a half milliliters of nitric acid into our solution.
Now we are going to filter our aquaregia, and I would like you to take notice of how dark this aquaregia is. I've never had aquaregia this dark before in any material that I had run. Now we are going to add in our sulfamic acid to denox or neutralize our aquaregia. I don't measure my sulfamic acid, but I just keep adding sulfamic acid in until the reaction stops in the aquaregia. Now we will filter our aquaregia again to remove any sulfamic acid granules that might be in our aquaregia. I had pre-made 80 milliliters of iron sulfate with 80 milliliters of distilled water and three teaspoons of iron sulfate and I mixed it together. I am using the same filter because I don't see why I need to change the filter since it's going in the same solution and it's not going to affect the iron sulfate that is in our aquaregia. So now we are going to precipitate our aquaregia and see if we get any type of gold. I do want to take a stannous chloride test to see if it comes positive for gold. I do want to mention that the stannous chloride that we're using and the nitric acid that we're using in this project today, we had made in our laboratory. And I will leave a link to our episodes on how you can make your own stannous chloride and nitric acid for your projects that will be cost effective for you. And not so good news for us as our stannous chloride test has come up negative as no gold in our solution. Since we have come this far, I am going to let this precipitate overnight and see if we get any type of a gold drop. And now it is the following morning and you can see there is hardly anything on the bottom of our beaker from our precipitation of our aquaregia. We will pour out our aquaregia and then give this a rinse and we'll see if this is gold drop in our beaker. There is really next to nothing in our beaker, but we're going to press forward and find out what that material is. I am going to glaze my 15 gram cupel with some borax and see if it will work for the gold drop that we have. We have our material in our cupel. Now let's see what we have. I would like to say if you'd like to subscribe to Lord Shadow's YouTube channel, I am going to leave a link to his channel in the description box. I went to pick up the cupel with some tongs and it just crumbled to pieces. I did let this heat in the furnace at 2100 degrees for five minutes and it stayed black so it is not gold. Well, this wraps up this episode of us running our Grano Dorite ore from Montana from Lord Shadow. And unfortunately, we did not get any gold in this sample, but maybe on the next one, we do have some quartz that we're going to uh, run and we're going to do a fire assay on that sample. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to spank that like button and to share this on your channel so others can enjoy the process. And 
And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, I would love to encourage you to subscribe and to become part of our AU family. We would love to have you as a part of our family. I would like to communicate with you. We're so thankful that you're here. We deeply appreciate your support and we will see you on the next one.